to the Barefoot Vlogger live stream on location in sunny Florida. Join the chat and join the fun. Barefoot will be live in just a minute or two, so strap yourselves in. This should be a good one. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome live to a rather cloudy and sometimes rainy Wednesday, South Florida afternoon. Thanks for joining me. That is the Atlantic Ocean you're looking at through that railing there, and uh, I will take care of that impediment in a moment. But I wanted to first greet you all and welcome you and thank you for joining me. I wanted to get out, guys, because I told you that it had been day after day after day of just incredibly dry, um, I don't want to say uncharacteristic because we do typically get dry weather. This is our dry season, but I mean, once in a while you get rain. We haven't seen any rain for a matter of probably a month maybe longer than that so finally today we got some rain and i actually drove further north to where there was more rain than where i live uh, a little further to the south of here but this is um i'm not far from palm beach and uh, i'm at a hotel and a resort that we will look at a little bit here momentarily but um let me say hello and greet you welcome i have a sweatshirt on this is a rarity. This is the Barefoot Vlogger sweatshirt with a hood, a hooded sweatshirt. And when I left my hometown, and you guys know where that is, just to the south of here, I looked at the uh, temperature in the car and it said 71 degrees. And then when I got here, which isn't that far in the scheme of things, you're talking about 20 miles maybe, uh, the temperature went down to 64. And it feels at least that. Uh, although there's, you know, it's, it's humid, there's clouds, there's been some rain. It's mostly scattered showers and uh, light, light rain to a drizzle. Right now it's not raining. I'm sitting outside here and I will tell you momentarily where I am, but let me say hello. I really don't need the sunglasses, but uh, I like to wear them. So welcome one and all. And I think Richard, you were the first one on today. And I saw that you mentioned the barefoot rain dance. Uh, I, I, in one of the previous live streams, was talking again, as I do daily, about how it hasn't rained. And I was like, let me jinx it. The minute I say something that something is not a certain way or it is a certain way and I, I, I talk about it, it goes the other way. So I was like, let me talk about how there's been no rain and let me call upon the rain gods to throw some rain down. And it, it's been days, but finally, finally it's here anyway. Enough about that, but you can see the cloud cover. There's actually a patch of blue right there. Hold on off of me and show you. And this is a hotel resort that I'm at in Manalapan. Manalapan is a, um, a very, I hate, the word, I hate to use the word exclusive, but it's in the eastern Palm Beach County, uh, sort of high rent district neighborhood uh, that is, is also an island, barrier island and it is beautiful here and this hotel is on it and just to the 
just to the north of me, where I'm at, you can make out the Lake Worth Pier. Let me get a shot, and I will catch up with your chat because I want to speak with you guys and uh, talk to you and see how we're doing here. Um, so let me do that while I'm showing you this view. Hopefully you can hear me okay. I do have the wireless mic because it is extremely windy. I did forget it. Um, one of the last streams I did, and it was a brutal mistake. In fact, in Kyocho, even, even there, I just figured with all the other ambient noise going on, it wouldn't matter, and um, it kind of does. So I do have you on a wireless microphone that has a muff on it. It's pretty close to my mouth, so I'll try not to scream at you guys, but uh, that's the situation from here. Um, I'll turn it this way and show you that view and let you see that I am reading your chat. Hi, Colleen. Hey, KJ, what's going on? I finally got a notification. I, you know what? It's funny because um, I actually... I was fortunate enough to meet up with uh, Triple C and Danielle, and uh, they were telling me that too, that the alerts, sometimes they get them, sometimes they don't. So, and I've heard that from, from other folks, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the YouTube gods don't like me. I'm not sure, but um, check in with me every now and then. I will try to, my modus operandi for this channel is to try to have some kind of content, whether it's a live stream, a, uh, a, a premiere, or a vlog on a daily basis. That's in the perfect world. So I will continue to try to do that. So check every day, guys, you know, if you don't get the alerts. Uh, hi, Eric. You met Action Kid in person? Oh, you know what? I think I saw that. Was that last night? I saw that. That's awesome. Um, I have a beer, by the way, a Hefeweizen. So let me cheers you guys. And welcome you to Manalapan at the O Resort. It's a beautiful place. I'm actually gonna walk through with you guys, and we're gonna take a little walk. So let me uh, just finish this beer and catch up with you guys. And thank you, thank you all. Thank you all for all of your support. Whatever form, shape, or size that support may come in, you guys are all so supportive and I appreciate it. Hi, Apprentice, what's going on? Very nice, beautiful view, isn't it? I, an apprentice, I think you came over here from Action Kid, too. Thank you for joining me. Really appreciate it. Beach Bum, beautiful view, looks inviting. So, guys, let me show you the erosion that is taking place here. It's, it's a high tide, and it's huge waves, and it's, it's almost got those storm-like conditions. So keep that in mind. But nonetheless, there's no beach here. Hold on. I'll get it off of me again. I don't like keeping it on me too long. My wife has warned me about that. But look at this. Look at this. Where's the beach? Remember, where's the beef? Where's the beach? There's no beach here, guys. If you wanted to go to the beach, you'd be... Look, this water is coming up to the seawall here. In fact, you know what? I'll take you guys over there. Hold on. There's a little flybridge here. Let's walk on that. And I'll continue if, if you're... Uh... Oh, Robert! Nine ninety nine super chat from Robert. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate it. I was just commenting, responding to your comment this morning. Thank you so much, my friend. It means so much to me. And uh, you're always so supportive and so kind. And it means the world. So thank you. That enables me to get out and uh, get in the blue iguana and do things like this and even further reaches, which we will continue to do together. All about life's experiences. And uh, let's take a little Hefeweizen, Cam, and go over here. See, they have showers here. Oh, let me show you guys the pool. Hold on, I will give you a wider view. Hang on, hang on. I kind of like that number one lens. This is the, uh, put that down there for a second. This is the iPhone 14 Plus, Pro Plus, and it has three different settings on the camera lens. It's the 0.5 times, the one and the two. This is on the 0.5 right now, which gives you a wider depth of field and um, you can see this beautiful hotel called the O. It was something before that. I'm trying to remember the name. Was it the Ritz Carlton? Might have been a Ritz Carlton. Uh, look that up, somebody. But this is called the O, E A U, which in French means water. I actually know a little French. I took some in high school and uh, retained un peu, which means very little. So they have this ocean kitchen and they have a outdoor bar, and I will show that to you guys momentarily, but um, I need to tread lightly. It says that the water temperature is 75 degrees, so the water temperature is 
probably about 12 degrees warmer than the air temperature right now. Here you can see they have this, uh, I'm not sure if I should be walking on this, but let's give it a shot, shall we? It doesn't say not to. Whoa. Whoa. This thing is moving. Attempt my luck here. Whoa, this thing is shaking. All right. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure because the gate was open. I'm sorry. Thank you. I don't want to put myself. I don't either. Thank you. So nice here. What happened to the beach? So, are they going to do anything to um, fix that? Yeah, I'm sure they will. I'm sure they'll. that's a big problem down here. The surfers love it though, don't they? Beautiful. Make some great video here, I'll tell you. Thank you so much. The water today is very aqua velva colored. It's a little more of a blue tint. It's a blue green, but a little bit more of in, in the blue neighborhood, which I kind of like, and that's because it's a little bit of a darker day. And we got some kind of a military helicopter possibly you guys see that I don't think that's a private helicopter it could be well, it's not hard because it doesn't have the Coast Guard colors anyway hi Connie look at that beautiful ocean isn't it beautiful yep yeah this is a southern shot by the way you can see the skies guys even when it's cloudy here and um, nasty conditions, if you will. It's still pretty nice. I'm going to uh, walk around here a little bit, but I want to catch up with you. Hi, Joe. Hi, Donna. Hi, Lorraine. Good to see you. Honey Hernandez. Where's the Ritz, Ritz Carlton in Riviera Beach? There are a couple of Ritz Carltons around in Palm Beach. I know that this is uh, called O Hotel. It's E A U. It's a hotel resort, uh, and it's a beautiful location here in Manalapan. Hi, Alan. Just checking in. What's going on today? We got rain. We got rain, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, my jinx worked. It finally worked. You know what? Farmers, you can thank me. And also, everybody that's got a dirty car, it's funny because, you know, you go, you get a car wash, and the next morning you wake up, and your car's dirty again. So this will help out a little bit. Anyway, uh, Mary says, I'll be in Hollywood this weekend. Nice. Need some sun. Oh, you'll get it. You'll get it. Um, I'm actually scrolling back, so this isn't in any order. Hi, Ofty. When's high tide? <laughs> When's high tide? I think this answers your question. <laughs> this is high tide. And we've had a lot of full moons lately and all that. Hi, Seer. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hit the like button. Crazy sky. It is. And it's about time. Henry thinks it's a beautiful day, and I agree with him. I've been waiting for this, guys. Um, who did I miss? Mighty Bull in the house. What's up? Rolling, rolling, rolling. There we go. I'm going to walk, guys. I will walk. Um, I want to just greet you all. Hi, Toby. Think it's warmer in Nebraska? 69. It probably is. Look at that. I always go there for the spa and the candle, says Honey Hernandez. Yes, the spot is beautiful here, and it's well known. It's pretty, it's pretty famous in these parts. Look what they did with the towels, guys, all right? This is how you know you're in, like, a chic place, all right? They take the towel, and somebody here knows how to make the towel, fold it to where it looks like a swan, okay? I mean, you could give me 10 years. I don't think I could figure that out. So, I don't know. It's really cool, though. But, um... We will, uh, we will walk the grounds here a little bit t together, guys. I have a beer. I'll show you the bar. The bar's over here. I, don't want, I just got to kind of low-key it, you know. I don't want to infringe on anyone's vacation time, but it looks like they have a... I don't know what that is under there. That's it could be a table or it could be like a little fireplace deal. It could, today would be a good day for it, but there's the bar. And uh, you can see the, uh, the rooms that they have. Everybody's got a pretty good view of the ocean. They have those, those little uh, hanging, hanging chairs there. You see those hanging chairs from the hotel? Kind of puts you in uh, there a little bit. 
Um, I will slowly pan over and show you this beautiful pool. And what a lovely day it is. They do have some music. I don't think it's an issue because it's kind of in the background. They have a lot of these lounge chairs here, tables with umbrellas. And I will tell you guys, I will tell you, I am wearing this sweatshirt and I'm, I'm a little bit chilly. I'm a little bit chilly, so poor me, right? Well, let's take a walk. Let's go to the south end of the property here. And I will try to read the chat as much as I can. A beer is all you need. AK1, what's up, brother? My Florida brother. It was so good seeing you down here. I loved it, man. We had a nice little uh, meetup. I uh, put it on the Patreon for those of you that are interested. K1, Kenneth, good friend and uh, long time faithful Barefoot Army member. So it was so nice. I got to meet him uh, right at the elbow room, right on A1A and uh, Las Olas there. That was, that was a lot of fun. Good to see you. New York in the house. What's up, New York? My old stomping grounds of beer, chips, and hot salsa. Yeah, I, I got I got some uh, some issues that uh, digestive type issues that are supposed to prevent me from having any kind of hot stuff. But you know what? Every now and then, once in a while, I think you can sample things. Just don't overdo it. You got to live your life too, guys. You got to live your life too. So, tranquility pool. Tranquility Base, the eagle has landed. Look at this, guys. Look at this. You know what? It kind of reminds me of like those Renaissance days. Remember the Renaissances with the, uh, you know, the horses that were all decked out and the knights in shining armor? Look at this. Look at this. So cool, man. That'll keep you out of the rain. They got these ground level rooms, have these pergolas that have drapes on them with lounge chairs. How pretty is that? Ornamental snails. I love it. So, it's really lovely here. There's a lot of uh, palm trees spread throughout. You have this pool with the water spilling over to help give it that infinity look when you're in it like this gentleman doing laps right now but look at the water just spilling over no spring break no let's give spring break a while guys I'll tell you why my age is showing because I was like you know all right been there done that we did a lot. I did a lot of interviews and live streams and vlogs, and I certainly don't want to exploit that situation. I think we did plenty there, and it's time to move onward and upward. But here's a nice view of this beautiful pool here. This is another way to go. Very inviting. Yeah, let's feel it, guys. Let's feel the, let's feel the water. Hold on. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. All right, that's got to be 80 degrees. Maybe 85. That water is warm. I wonder if these guys know what the temperature is. It is warm. It's beautiful. It's lovely. Is this a shower? Yeah, it's a shower. Look at this shower mosaic. These little individual tiles. Somebody put that thing together. That is a work of art right there, guys. I want to go in. Yeah, you and me both. I'll tell you what, it's very inviting. They have these little uh, fountains here. Look at that. With the, with the river rock. That's so cool. Oh, man, even the fountains are warm. Let's 
it's only four feet and a half right here. So, and it's all beautiful tile here, this uh, stone deck. What is that called, travertine or something? Hey buddy, how are you? Doing great, how are you? I'm awesome. I'll tell you what, I just put my hand in there. I, it, that water feels like it's definitely, starts with a number eight, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. Do you know what the temperature is? 85. It's 85 degrees. <laughs> okay, now all we gotta do is work on the air temperature. Thanks, brother. Told you guys. I said 82, but yeah, no, it, it almost feels 90. It's something. All right, so I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put this down here. I'm gonna sit here for a moment. We are gonna walk. Another shot of this incredible view. For those of you that don't know, I'm in Manalapan. It is a barrier island town that is in Palm Beach County. And it's a cloudy, drizzly day. Although it hasn't rained now for a while. Oh, I forgot my umbrella. I gotta go back and get that umbrella. I might need it, if it's still there. Um, but we were due for this, guys. I, I'll tell you what, I've been every morning waking up, opening the drapes and looking out and like, sunny again? Like sunny, like no clouds at whatsoever. And I'm like, it, I told you guys, it felt like Groundhog, Groundhog Day every single day. So this is welcome. This is welcome. It's good to change things up once in a while and appreciate those sunny days. And it just makes me appreciate this. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to go back, get my umbrella that I forgot. I'm always forgetting something. And, uh, and then I'm going to take you through and outside, and we're going to take a little walk. We're going to walk from Manalapan and we're going to walk to Lantana. Hi, Susie Q. Reef, what's up? This is called the O, E-A-U. O is French for the word water. And it's a great name because there's certainly a lot of it close by. Hi, Jelani. Okay, Richard looked it up. Look at this, Richard, the man with the stats. 1,500 a night during season. Me a bag of shells, as Ralph Cramden would say. And you know, South Florida has quite, well, really the entire state of Florida has a lot of great hotels that if you, uh, you know, if you want to find something that is a little more on the exclusive side, lifestyles of the rich and famous, use your own description, uh, they're here. You know, you have the breakers just to the north of me. You have the Biltmore in Miami. I mean, they abound. You know, my personal favorite hotel of all, and possibly of all time, is the Fountain Blue. I just love it. I'm a big fan of it. It's It's got a lot of uh, fame from movies that were made there, and people who stayed there, and all of the renovations that have been done over the years to kind of keep it up with the times, yet still maintain its majestic Florida appeal. It's, it's, just a, it's just a great, magical place. And at some point, I'm gonna go stay there and bring you guys with me. Hi, Manny. Saw a giant sargassum patch headed here. Yes, Manny, thank you for mentioning that. Thank you for mentioning that. That is really important. I don't see it now, and I was looking for it. I read the same article. Uh, or one of the many articles that are out there now. There is a huge, huge, tons and miles of sargassum that is heading our way and is gonna hit these beaches any day now. So I will report to you guys back on that, but they're saying it is going to be of epic proportions, the likes of which we probably haven't seen in a long time, if ever, and it's actually I, the sargassum season really is supposed to start in May, so it's still early and run through October. Uh, nonetheless, it's, uh, it is starting to happen, and they believe that you know man-made contributions to the the problem is what is exacerbating it, and it's uh, it's it's 
it's something that needs to be addressed. And more than likely, and they don't even know for sure, but more than likely, it is a problem stemming from the nitrogen that is being poured into the water, the fertilizers and the chemicals that get poured into rivers that end up in the oceans that feed that stuff. It's like feeding the problem. So, I mean, again, that is just speculation. They, they're not sure 100%, but that's what they believe is causing the problems. So, hi, Phil. West Coast has red tide, yeah. Uh, well, actually, that sargassum is going to go into the... Um, Hey, buddy. Into the Gulf as well. It's going to, uh, they were talking about the Yucatan Peninsula getting a lot of it. Perhaps even more than here. So, you know, it's the kind of thing that tides will carry it. And the Caribbean's going to get it. Uh, Mexico's going to get it. And I'm sure some of it is going to end up on the Gulf beaches as well. But they got their, their hands full with the red tide. Hi, Eliana. How are you? Good to see you. She left me such a nice message. She's from Brazil, ladies and gentlemen. Please, please welcome her. And uh, thank you for joining us. Bamagator, what's up? American Constellation, the East Coast. Thought it was the West. West Coast has red tide. Uh, but Sargassum can go to the Gulf too. It's just, it's just more prevalent here because the ocean is gonna carry it and it's going to end up on these shores. It really emanates from out there, guys, from the ocean. So some of it can get to the Gulf, but more of it will get here. The Yucatan, if you look at it on a map, it kind of just juts out. And so that's why a lot of it will end up being carried there. The Gulf of Florida is a little more protected because the peninsula itself sort of hangs down and keeps it from going there. But, but they will get some. They will get some, more than likely. Will it poison all the sea life? Listen, you know what? It's a great question. It actually um, is a habitat for the sea life to an extent, but when it blooms, and that's what they call it, a bloom, the way it has been, it's just like, it's just like changing any aspect of either the atmosphere or the environment or an ecosystem. It, it, could, it throws things off, guys. Um, I mentioned to you guys when I was walking Delray and we saw a lot of it, that it's edible, that people eat it. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. I'm going on the record and telling you right now, don't eat it because I was reading about that and they said that it actually has heavy metals in it. So even though people eat it, they should not be. They should not be. It's, it's, I mean, you could eat it. Guys, I could eat this rail if I could get my teeth around it and sink it into it. You know what I mean? You, there's things that even if you could eat it, you shouldn't eat. If it's got heavy metals in it, highly toxic, don't eat it. So that toxicity can affect other things. And, uh, you know, here, here's the thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sum, up, sum it up this way. When it comes and it ends up on the beach, within 48 hours it starts to rot and it smells like rotten eggs. Nobody, listen, the, the smell of eggs isn't good to begin with. Rotten eggs, it's terrible. So. Uh, when it gets that bad, they will send out the crews, the tractors, and they will come and clean it up. The problem is that can, that can affect the beaches, that can affect the ecosystem, that can affect the creatures like the sea turtles that come and nest here and try to lay their eggs. So, uh, guys, it's a big issue. It really is. It's a big problem, and I don't know the answer, but there's going to be more coming in. So thank you for, uh, for mentioning that. Hi, Hessa. I hate the cold so much. I cry when winter starts. Well, it's almost over. Hi, Louise and Shannon. Good to see you guys. We just hate the cold. Yeah. Uh, and it's been a brutal winter. Listen, I'm amazed at what kind of winter this has been for everyone. But my heart goes out to California. My out to California guys because maybe more so than anywhere else I know many of you guys have been pummeled and it's not to take anything away from you but you guys are kind of used to it California is not I just read that close to a million people are without power right now in California because of the uh, what is it called the atmospheric river 
that they have that's going on there right now, and it is just unbelievable what they have been through. Um, 850,000 people with no power in California now. So it's, uh, it's been brutal. It's been brutal. And because of what's happening around the country, I've seen so many more people here this year than, I, than I've noticed in a long time. ITL, what's up, Texas? Texas in the house, the Lone Star State. Do you know my uh, good friend K1? that I met, also from Texas. Texas got some great people, man, I'll tell you. They know how to party. How about those guys that I met on the beach in Bell Harbor that were uh, from Texas celebrating their friend's um, bachelor party? Oh, good to hear it. Tropical Paradise, what's going on? Made it to your life, I'm so happy. And Sue said sea turtles can get caught in it and drown in it. Yep. Yeah, anything that is too much and premature, the likes of which this is right now, is not a good thing. Off the likes of Deep Woods Home. Yeah, listen, I lived in Charlotte and I enjoyed the woods. It was nice and fun. But I miss this. You know, everybody to each their own. Everybody's got their, their preference. There's a lot of things about Charlotte I do miss. I'll tell you. American Constellation thinks uh, Northerners complain too much about the water conditions. That's always been Florida. It's nothing new. Well, yeah, I don't know if it's just Northerners. It could be. I mean, okay. I'm a Northerner. I, uh, I'm not complaining about the water. I like it. I really enjoy it. I I'll tell you what. I, I can appreciate it because look at the colors look at the the warmth of it and the fact that you can get into it like you're seeing some people out out there right now i couldn't do that if i was back where i grew up you know so but like i said everybody's got their own likes and dislikes if everybody felt the way i do about florida then everybody be living here what's up jamar i miss charlotte as well hi filipino what's up don you ready for Florida? Well, come on down. Guys, if I missed anyone, I see Zone. What's going on? If I missed anyone, uh, my apologies. Let me tell you what to do. I'm going to just finish the rest of this here real quickly, and then I'm going to walk through the hotel, and we are going to walk from Manalapan through Lantana, and we have a mission today. I will explain that to you as we go. So thank you for joining me, and please follow me the rest of the way. I think this will be a lot of fun. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, this channel takes its name. Our namesake is the Barefoot Mailman. The Barefoot Mailman delivered mail back in the late 1800s to South Florida on a 120 mile round trip trek. Guys, driving 100, anybody drive 120 miles recently? Imagine these poor souls walking on this very beach. 120 miles from pretty much the beginnings of where that pier is right there in Lake Worth all the way down to Miami. Round trip, 120 miles, barefoot on the beach. There is a famous author by the name of Theodore Pratt that wrote a book that they later made into a movie called The Barefoot Mailman, but that is who we take our name from, a tribute. You can see this water is, I mean, guys, I could almost dive off of this seawall <laughs> when the waves come in into the water. That's how close it is. Wow, we have 226 people watching us, and I really appreciate it. I do not take that lightly. Many of you have told me that you live vicariously through me because of the places that you are at and would like to be here and get out of where you are, at least temporarily, and uh, I am sympathetic to that and feel a responsibility to do the best I can to, to show you what's going on. I'll tell you what, let's take a walk. Don't let me forget the umbrella. I don't think I need it, but let's go to the far reaches of the hotel here. And there is a little public beach, by, by the way, right here. This is the little... Lantana Public Beach. 
there's also public parking there. Didn't I do a uh, live stream from that little pavilion over there? I thought I did during one of the hurricanes. Yeah, so this is entry to the public beach right here. You see? And there's parking just on the other side. And there's A1A. Can you guys see the sign for A1A? At that light, it's A1A. What's up, Hank Johnson? How you doing? Light rains of Fort Lauderdale as well. Love the streams. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. I can't. I need to go on vacation very soon. Let's go, Hesse. Come on down. The blue sky and water and the sounds of the water heals me. It is. It's very therapeutic. What's up, Dave? Classic cars. Pennsylvania in the house. I lived in Boca Raton in the 80s. I miss it for sure. Well, do you remember FAU back in the 80s? I attended there for a semester or two, and it uh, was a much different place than it is right now. But you can see we have some surfers out here. You can see the... Uh, let me get a... I'll tell you what. Let me close in for a close shot. This is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I have it on the two times lens. And that right there is the Lake Worth Pier where Benny's on the Beach is. Stay tuned for more on that. Stay tuned for more on the Barefoot Mailman and his legacy and history. Hi, we have an excellent quality stream. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you know what? Travel is still, thank you. I tested it before I went live just to make sure I wasn't going to disrupt your guys' day and waste your time. And it showed me it was pretty good, so I went with it. Hi, Mike. What's up, brother? Great place for breakfast. Yeah. Lunch and dinner and snacks, <laughs> you know? Budapest is in the house. What's up, Budapest? Budapest is the capital of Hungary, is it not? If I know my capitals correctly, I think it's the capital of Hungary. Bucharest is Romania. It, you, you can get those confused because they are similar. Confirm that I'm correct. What's up, Johnny? Oh, Bon Jovi really was at Benny's. Nice. Jasmine is moving in October? Welcome to Florida. Alta Magna, hello from Budapest. Yeah, uh, it is. It's the capital of Hungary. Well. One day I would love to visit your beautiful country. I will tell you that I am a fan of the Hungarian people, have done so much to help the poor people of Ukraine with what they're going through. Your country has been a godsend to many of them, taking them in, feeding them, clothing them, housing them, and protecting them. So God bless you all, and thank you for doing that. Cheers, onward and upward. Slava, Ukraine. Hi, Catherine. What's up, Glenny? Good to see you. Look, guys, all of a sudden, it's not so rainy anymore. I got to schlep that umbrella around, but that's okay. All right, guys, we're going to make tracks, and we're going to start walking, and we're going to have an expedition. Whenever I walk, I have a mission on this channel. And our mission today, I tell you what, let's get through the lobby. That may not be so easy. We're going to walk through the lobby. I hope the signal holds out. It probably will. If it doesn't, I'll see you on the other side. This must look nice when they have these little lantern lights lit up at night. such a slow drinker. Sorry. You're looking at the Atlantic Ocean, which keeps going until you hit Africa. Ah, that was good. Guys, let's make it through this hotel lobby. 
just joining me. This is a Barefoot Vlogger. I'm live here in Manalapan at the O Hotel. There's the bar. Looks like they got a hot tub right there. I should have streamed from the hot tub. Again, guys, I'm not sure about the uh, the signal inside the hotel. Oops. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Sure. Pretty nice lobby too, by the way. There's a lot in there. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate that. This is the restaurant here. Champagne, anyone? What's up, Bowser? We are inside of the lobby of the O Hotel and Resort. They got a bar back here, too, guys. Again, I don't know how good this signal is, if at all, but I'm giving it a shot. Oh, they got the magnums. This is where they hide them. Drink anyone? How about a martini for the road? We got a sushi bar in here too. Guys, ooh, looks nice and fresh. What, you got some eel there? I love it. Hey. Cheers. How about the fireplace, guys? I told you it was chilly in here. Hey guys. Thank you. That was fun. Did you guys see any of that? I sure hope so. Nice place. It's a good location too, if you know, because like downtown West Palm Beach, Clematis Street, uh, uh, it, it's, you got a lot that's really close by that, um, that you can enjoy from here. And plus they have beaches here. In fact, you know what? I'll walk over and I'll show you guys. And here's a, uh, let me give you an establishing shot here from the street so you can see. Hi, Marie. It is a beautiful hotel. Unless you are in Miami, the beaches on the East Coast just are not as nice. Uh, the sand is not as nice. It's gray and coarse. Eh, you know what? Well... The sand is, it depends. I mean, I like Hollywood Beach. Hollywood is pretty nice. I wouldn't call it gray and coarse. Um, go to Pompano Beach and look at, the, look at the sand there now. Go to, I mean, I, I could probably throw out a, look at Bell Harbor where I was. I'll put that up against any beach on the Gulf Coast. And to me, when I was on the Gulf Coast, and not to slight the Gulf Coast because I love it too, some of those beaches just look too man-made to me, man. 
They just looked too man-made. They were sprawling. They were like too big. And the water, there's no waves. So I could make an equal argument as to why I would much rather be on this side than on the Gulf Coast. But I, but I get your point too. I get your point too. It's just, guys, it is a, it is a personal preference. You got to go where, what you like. On, in, 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 in general, as a generalization, I would agree with you. I would say you're right. I would say that the, that the beaches are nicer. The sand is wider on the Gulf Coast. There's no question about that because um, almost every beach on the Gulf Coast has white sand, Al almost every one. And then you go up to 30A and, um, you know, the, uh, the Panhandle, and those beaches are also white sand and beautiful. So I don't disagree with you, but I wouldn't, um, you know, I, I wouldn't put the kibosh on the beaches on this side either other than just Miami. I think there are other ones. Go look at look at um, Juno Beach. Juno Beach is really nice here. So, and also when I was further north, believe it or not, now when you get to like Ormond Beach and that area, Flagler Beach, the sand is actually like red, which is kind of cool and very interesting. Uh, but when you get above that and further north, then the sand kind of gets white again. Um, when I was like in the St. Augustine area and I went into some of those uh, parks that are there, those beach parks, the sand was white. It was beautiful. So, you know, the good news is this. There's a diversity of the colors, the coarseness, the shapes and sizes of the grains of sand and all that that I think makes Florida uh, that much more attractive to people coming from all areas of the country and the world because you could go to you no two beaches are alike no two beaches are alike and that's what's really cool about it but anyway good conversation and good food for thought i appreciate it here you go town of lantana so how funny is that guys how funny is that check this out check this out right here is the sign okay this is the sign for the public beach access to the town of Lantana. Right there, right there, the hotel we were at is Manalapan. So literally, I'm in Lantana. Hold on. I'm in Manalapan. How funny is that? Anyway, I will do my best to keep up with the it's a great conversation, and uh, I love to get into it with you guys. But here you go. Let's, you know what? Let's walk on the beach. Hold on. Barefoot man male style. Right on the beach. Call me a beach. I will live anywhere in Florida. Whoa, I don't want to get wet because of my footwear this is a nice hotel I really like the breakers in Palm yeah PP hey PP I'm with you I love the breakers I will be doing something with the breakers too at some point so stay tuned um what did I miss I'm going back what's up Phil Gillespie what's going on or is it Gillespie I'm sorry I think it's a hard G right Good to see you. New Smyrna has nice beaches. They do, and a lot of sharks. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> Don't let them scare you. Hi, Kelly. I live in Philly. They must be crazy. Come here and look at our Jersey beaches, LOL. Yeah. I, you know what? I like them up there, too, guys. I like the beaches up there, too. I like them everywhere. Uh, beach is a beach. Let's face it. A beach is a beach. A beach is a great place to come and get away from it all and enjoy tranquility because it's not easy to get everywhere hello what's going on that ain't a beach when the tide comes up there ain't no beach all right It's, it's, it's an ocean though. 
you ain't got no ocean on your side. How about that? You won't see waves like this on the Gulf. You got, you got a lake over there, my friend. If you like lakes, welcome to the Gulf. You got a lake. You won't have that. You can't surf. You see what these guys are doing? You can talk about the beach. I got to get defensive now, guys. I'm sorry. This guy's pissing me off. You see these guys surfing? Try doing that on the Gulf. Try doing that. Good luck. You'll fall asleep on your surfboard. I was looking for the Meisner tour. No, that video is not up for many reasons that I won't get into. What's up, Triple C? That video is private right now for many reasons that I won't get into, but I think most of you that were with me know why, so that's all I'm gonna say. Frank, what's going on? Highland Beach. Oh, wow, beautiful place you live in, my friend. I walk over there all the time, as you know. What's up, Stephen from Wadsworth, Texas? Love Texas, great people. And you stole my picture from me, <laughs> but that's okay. We replaced them with some other good guys. <laughs> um, Kendall, what's going on? Uh, I am still looking. It's great to find serenity. Hi, Kelly, yes. Marie, absolutely agree. I love your uh, shamrock emoji, that's awesome. Donna says she never takes the beach for granted, as you should not, because I moved away from it. And thank you, Joe S. Guys, big shout out to Joe S. Great admin, he's always with me. He's a huge help to this channel, and I really appreciate everything that he does and he's a good friend um i'd rather deal with seaweed yeah well you know what you should see the other guy how about that you should see the other guy you ever hear that look up some hockey fights and look at the guy's knuckles from that how about that? Anyway. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start walking. Actually, you know what? We can walk this way real quick. Yeah, Dr. Beach, who is Dr. Beach? What is Dr. Beach's criteria for a great beach? Uh, you know what I mean? I, I saw that because I'm gonna tell you right now, I disagree with Dr. Beach. I went to Siesta Key, which everybody says is the greatest beach in the world. It's the number one beach in Florida. It's the greatest beach. And you know what? Wasn't that impressed. Wasn't that impressed. Had a very fake feel to it. I liked Anna Marie Island much Anna Maria Island much better than, better than Siesta. And I was only there one day. So I grew up on the beach. I don't know where Dr. Beach is from. I grew up on beaches. I've lived on beaches my entire life. Does that make me an expert? I don't know. I'll let you guys be the judge. But I know what I like. And Siesta Key, I was hearing, oh, Siesta this, Siesta that, greatest beach in the world, greatest this, greatest. I don't think it could touch Miami Beach. I don't think so. I would take Miami Beach over Siesta Key every day and twice on Sunday. But that's my opinion, and I respect yours. So, you know, it, it's, it's okay to have these debates and these um, differences of opinion. 
I respect you for yours, but you, you got to respect me for mine too. Or at least I hope you do. So this is a little restaurant deal right here and bar that is not open right now. Yeah, I liked Anna Marie Island much better than, uh, than Siesta Key. I thought Siesta Key was way overdone, overblown. And if that's what Dr. Beach is known for, and he's saying that, that he or she, I don't know if it's a man or woman, I really don't know. Um, me personally though, listen, it's a beautiful beach. I, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's an ugly beach and don't go there. It's a beautiful, beautiful beach, okay? It's beautiful. But I don't think it's the best beach in Florida by a long shot. I don't. That's my opinion, which I'm entitled to, as you are yours. Um, I personally liked Anna Maria Island better. I like Clearwater Beach better. I like Clearwater Beach better personally um and there's others i like marco island better a lot better so i could keep going i could keep going um there are some beaches on the um panhandle that i thought were beautiful santa rosa gorgeous beautiful beach loved it saint augustine i thought i thought the beaches in the in the parks is, the park system all along that northern edge of the florida east coast were beautiful i think siesta key is uh there's too much hype about it it's overhyped and and that's why i went there expecting so much and when i saw it i was like okay this is nice but it's certainly not the nicest beach in florida my opinion Henry loves any beach. Listen, I grew up in Brighton Beach, Brooklyn, New York, so any beach in the state of Florida beats that probably. You know? I have not skipped a beat. Thanks, Peter. No lifeguards running in slow-mo. Yeah. We got to get that going. Hey, it stopped raining. I brought an umbrella, guys, just in case. Arguing, you know, it's so funny, Don. Great point. Arguing beaches is like arguing religion. I listen. I respect uh, constellation. You, you're entitled to your opinion, and you know what? There's a lot of people that agree with you. There's a lot of people that agree with you, so I'm okay with it. It's not. It's friendly. It's all. It's all friendly. It's all a friendly discussion and opinion, and it's fun to do it. It's you know what? It's kind of like guys. It's like I'm a Mets fan. Right? And then you get Yankee fans, you got Red Sox fans, you got Phillies fans, you got Cubs fans. And it's like we all make our case for why our team is better and, and your team sucks. No, oh, you know? So I, I, it's good. It's good. It's, it's cool. I'm good with it. Trust me. Trust me. I like the banter. I like the difference of opinion. I don't take anything personally because it's all subjective. It's completely subjective. And there's a lot of people that, are, that will agree with Constellation on. He said, you know what? He's, listen, I'll give it to him. He's right. There isn't, there's no beach here. There's no beach. The beach is gone. He's right. They need to address this. They need to fix this. And they will. Um, but you know what? It's like I said, I could go down to Hollywood. I could go down to Miami. And there's plenty of beach there. They, you know, I, they just haven't gotten to this yet. They probably don't have the funds for it. I don't know. I don't know, but it's interesting. And uh, again, I think it's good it's a good discussion. 77 is the water, 74 the air. That was a long time ago. They wrote this when it probably first thing in the morning. This is not a dog beach, by the way. And here it tells you right here about the turtle nesting season. Richard said there's a little motel just north that is very popular on the beach. Well, you know what? I'm going to start walking, guys. But listen, let's face it. The ocean is the most beautiful thing to see here. So um, I want to spend more time here. But yeah, look, there's no beach here. He's right. And I'm going to give it to him. I'm assuming you're a gentleman. You could be a young lady. I don't know. Constellation. I, 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 you know, I, it's, uh, it's true. There is no beach here. But 
part of the reason there's no beach is because there's a there's a strong surf that you're seeing that you won't get on your side. Listen. Oh, let's talk to these guys. Come on, let's talk to these guys. Hold on. Hold on. You know I gotta talk to these guys. Oh, we got surfers, ladies and gentlemen. What's going on, guys? Hey, can I just uh, ask you guys a couple of questions? Yeah. What, what are you What are you doing? You're going surfing right here in Atlanta? Fuck yeah, we are. All right, that's great. <laughs> Tell me about it. What's it like out there? Uh, we're gonna get fucking pitted. What does that mean? Uh, like fucking covered up. With the, what? The wave. Oh, okay. And uh, what about sharks? Fuck sharks. <laughs> <laughs> you don't care about no sharks. No, fuck sharks. All right. What's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you out there while you were surfing? I got pitted. By what? The wave. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun, guys, but be careful in all seriousness, all right? And hey, let me ask you a quick question before you go. Yeah. Gulf Coast or East Coast? What's better? East Coast. Why? Because we're here. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's one man's opinion. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, guys. I, I had to. I had to. All right. The sun is out. The sun will come out tomorrow and today. I've taken my e-bike on here. You can uh, check out the video. And I have done some hurricane stuff from here. This is a little restaurant. What's it called? Dunes or something? Dunes? Something would it be? I don't know. East Coast for sure, yeah. I Listen, guys, guys, guys hold on. I, it's because I've told you this before. I, I love the Gulf Coast of Florida. And I'm a new fan of the panhandle of Florida. I think it's beautiful. I think any place you choose is wonderful if that's what you choose. It's great. I kind of grew up here, though, guys. You know what I mean? And I, I think about it. I grew up with an ocean. To me, the ocean is actually more important than the beach. That's a good point. That's a good point. What's more important to you? If you're on the Gulf Coast, probably the beach. Many people would say the beach. I got to see that. I got to see that. I got to see some waves. I have to see because I grew up with it. I grew up with it. I saw hurricanes in Brighton Beach where I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. So I have to see rolling waves coming in. And that's just me. But... Um, but I love the Gulf Coast, and one of the great things about Florida and living down here, it's harder when you're visiting, but when you live here, is you can go visit the other side. Go visit the other side. It's a great thing to do. Caution submerged rocks. Does this go all the way down? It was broken last time. Oh, yeah, it goes all the way down. They fixed it. They fixed it. Remember, this was destroyed in a hurricane. Do not climb on the seawall. Okay. Whoa! Do you still film in your RV trailer? It's, it's not mine. I rented it. If you're talking to me, I'm assuming you are, Kelly. Uh, I rented that and I did a uh, almost two-week journey around the state of Florida. I mean, look at this. And I had a lot of fun. Okay, guys, I'm going to start walking now. We're actually going to walk away from the beach. But I want to show you a pretty interesting spot. So let's go. Join me. I liked your journey, do it again. You know what? I like my journey too. I want to do it again. And I will. The question is, where do I go this time? And I think that what I will do is I will um, spend longer time in fewer places. 
that's how I'm going to handle it this time. I'm going to spend more time in fewer places. I want to do some more sort of central Florida. I really haven't done any of that, and I haven't given it its due. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but it is a big part of Florida, and there's a lot to do. There's Crystal River, there's springs and, and, and lakes and rivers and things that I can go check out as well. Um, but also spend some more time um, in other places that I, haven't, that I haven't hit along the way that I really need to. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I am working on a walk that is a journey, that is an expedition, that is taking me down the coast of Florida, South Florida, all the way down to the Keys. And I started it in, uh, let's say, Delray, and I'm going down to Key West. I'm walking Key West one beach at a time, and um, you can watch those videos. This is the public parking right here for Lantana. This is a great town, guys. I'm telling you, this is, this is something that is a must-see, in my opinion, because this is kind of like when I first moved to Florida in Pompano Beach. It was more like this. It still kind of retains that uh, sort of uh, uh, old, old Florida feel to it, yet being in South Florida. Look at this, guys. How about that? That's a little Easter egg for you. That's a little Easter egg for you guys. You guys seeing this? Sign right here. Stay tuned. So it's A1A going north. We're going to cross A1A. There's where we just were, the O, Palm Beach. Let me get a tighter shot, guys. It, it, yeah, that's really inspiring. <laughs> Flip me to bird. Okay, this is East Ocean Avenue. What's up, Michelle? Did I say hello? I don't think I did. Hello, good to see you. Barefoot Mailman is all over the place. Yeah, as they should be. Barefoot Mailman is a very important lore here in South Florida. I mean, think of what they did. People, people had to get their mail. There were no roads. This wasn't here. None of this was here, it was all dirt. And it was a lot of bush and shrub and trees and just difficulty in terms of getting, getting around. But there were people that were moving down here because of what Flagler was doing. Henry Flagler, the railroad magnate that was extending the East Coast Railroad all the way down to Key West, started to attract people coming down here and living down here because of a lot of the same reasons that you guys want to be here, the weather getting out of the cold, getting out of the Midwest, getting out of the Northeast, getting out of these, you know, sub-zero temperatures in the difficult months of the winter and coming down here and seeing the beauty of it, enjoying the natural fauna and flora, palm trees that you can't get in colder climes and coming down here and establishing roots. And Flagler is largely, probably more so than anybody else ever in the history of this state, responsible for the migration of people coming down here, many of whom had money, that just wanted a nicer place in, in, in conditions that would be, you know, uh, more comfortable in the, in the winter months. So... None of this was here. So these mailmen used to walk around. This is a uh, senior living facility here. And look how nice it is right next to the beach. Called the Carlisle. Yep, that's right. There you go. Richard knows. 
There's a little park here, I think, too, to the right. I probably won't get signal in there, though, guys. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to uh, switch out my glasses because it's there's no need for the sunglasses. And I want to read your chat. Just bear with me. But this is the Lantana Nature Preserve. Do not pick the plants or flowers. By the way, Lantana... Does anybody know what a lantana is? The name lantana, where does that come from? Anybody know? Just switching out my glasses, guys. Wait up. So anyway, there is a, uh, a park here, and they have trails and things of that nature, but... Thanks, Johnny. Yeah, it's all good, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I just want to move on. You know what I mean? Onward and upward. But I probably won't get much signal in here, but you can see all of these hammocks that they have in here. Guys, the barefoot mailman, back in the day, this is the kind of stuff, this is what it looked like up to the, up to the water, up to the beach. It looked like this. And these guys had machetes with them they used to carry with them, and they'd have to cut through all of this stuff in order to make progress to walk. It's not like they just walked 60 miles to deliver the mail and, you know, they walked and it was a far walk. They had to cut through stuff like this. And there were alligators down in there and mosquitoes and hostile, um, you know, critters that would make the journey difficult. So that's right, Glennie. Lantana is a wild flower. That's where the name comes from. You got about 12,000 people that live here, so it's not a very big town at all. You know, think about it. I was just at Calle Ocho. There were oh, between, th they don't know exactly, but there were between three and 400,000 people that showed up, watched the videos, watched the live stream. There were three to 400,000 people that showed up for the... Calle Ocho festival that I attended in Little Havana. And this town has 12,000 people, roughly. There are, uh, it is about, about three square miles, so it's not a very big town, but um, it's, it's, it's a good spot to come and check out. I bet those old-timey mailmen where bare feet were ripped. Yeah, you know what? You can see some of the uh, portraits that they have. And you guys know Vapor Vice. Vapor Vice knows all about the uh, postal workers and the system down here. He's very familiar with it. But the post office in West Palm, the main post office, has, um, oh, look at this nice little canal. These guys are fishing here on this little bridge. It has the original murals that were drawn way back in the day, like the night, it was like around the 30s or 40s, and they're still hanging there today. How you doing, guys? Good, good. Are we, uh, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? I'm on YouTube right now. Is that cool? About fishing and stuff. I got folks that are interested in uh, South Florida and living down here, and I see you guys fishing on this canal, and I think it's really cool. Are you, uh, is this something you do often down here? Yeah, pretty often. I wouldn't call myself a uh, professional, though, by uh, far. <laughs> okay, well, that's cool. You're out, so you're out here having fun. Yeah, pretty much. You know, just casual fun. What do you? So this is a canal. Is this um, part of the Intracoastal? It is part of the Intracoastal. Yeah. Okay. And what what fish usually will be um, swimming around in here? Sheep's head, lane snappers. Uh, someone just caught a what was it? A snook out here. Really? Yeah. It's, is there a season for that right now? I. Don't think they're in season. I don't think January. they're allowed to. Right? Yeah, that's what you make time for. Snow. So you could keep that if you wanted to, right? Yeah. You need a license for it. But yeah. You need a license. Yeah. Okay. And what are you guys doing this mostly for fun or you if you catch something you'll take it home and cook it up? 
If we catch something big enough, yeah, we'll definitely take it home and cook it. Best thing you caught here that you took home and had a great meal, what was it? Um, Jack, I guess. I've got a decent sized jack. Uh, not in this specific area, but over by the Lake Worth Bridge. That's a pretty good sized fish, yeah. too. And it's pretty decent, decently big. I, I mean, you know, ate it within two hours of catching it. Yeah. Fresh, as fresh as it can get. <laughs> do you mind if I ask? I won't ask you exactly, but do, do you live around Lantana, not far from here? about six miles out okay so that's pretty close and w what is it about this spot right here in particular that you guys like well I switch between Lake Worth and over here in Lantana uh, this spot in particular just we usually we catch something you know uh, we were just came back from Lake Worth area and we caught nothing so oh, that's okay. why we're here now so this is your little fishing hall this is yeah. your spot yeah this is a little spot that's awesome well listen guys I really appreciate you chatting with us thank you so much and best of luck I hope you catch a winner no problem thanks you guys you too now bye bye if you want to see it by the way I'm the barefoot vlogger I know I'm not barefoot actually you know what I got a hold on I got a card I'll give it to you I think I do hold on I always guys I always like when I talk to people that are good enough to talk to me to let them know here you guys go here that's me yeah please subscribe and thank you so much you guys are so kind you too bye bye Is that bait in there? Or did you catch those? Oh, wow. Oh, I'm sorry. Nice. What do we got here? Oh, you got a big one. What is that? Uh, angel. You got an angel fish. Can you eat that? Uh -huh. It's good. It's, it's tasty, huh? Oh, look at that. Okay, thank you, dear. So you guys see where they are. Again, it's this little bridge that's here right off of Ocean Avenue. We're going to walk west. He's got a net over there on that side. You know what, Kelly? That's a good question. I, I didn't want to put them on the spot and ask them that in case they didn't have one. But um, for certain fish, you do. Maybe for others, you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to misspeak. I'm not sure. I, I think it just, I think the license depends on what you're catching and what you do with them. You probably don't need, and again, I could be wrong. I don't know. You probably don't need a license for just throwing a line in the water, catching something and throwing it back as long as the fish is thrown back in ample time to where it's not in any peril. But there are certain, like snook I know definitely has a season. Your son fishes for salmon? Oh, I love salmon. Salmon's so good. Salmon is one fish that I actually enjoy better raw than cooked, but it's good both ways. So this right here, guys, is Hypoluxo Island. So you really have two islands, two separate islands in between the mainland. You've got Hypoluxo Island, and I've watched the video. I've done a, um, I think it was a vlog. It might have been a live stream, I don't remember where I actually went on to Hypoluxo Island with my e-bike and looked at the beautiful houses that are, that are there. But you got Hypoluxo Island, which is sort of in between Manalapan and the mainland here. It's very cool. Look at these banyan trees. Wow, look at that banyan tree right there. That is beautiful. Go down to Coral Gables and you will see a lot of those. 256 people join. Thank you. Welcome, it's me, the Barefoot Vlogger. Yeah, my hair's a little must. That's okay. We were on the beach and it was quite windy and enjoyable, but uh, I'm walking west now and I'm in Lantana and we're gonna, take, we're gonna take an expedition together, guys. In Kansas, if you have a line in the water, you better have a license, Don says. Yeah, you know, um, like I said, I check the local laws, I don't know. I'm not much of a fisherman. When I was a kid, I did a lot of it, and I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun, you know, but that was in New York. It was a whole different thing, and look at this house. Talk about Ad Addison Meisner style. Remember, Addison Meisner was the architect 
in the early 19, right around the, um, yeah, like the 1920s era, Boca Raton mostly, that wanted to infuse South Florida with the style of architecture that he thought was um, more fitting for here with the palm trees and the tropical feel to it. And so a lot of that caught on to other locations throughout South Florida, and really the state of Florida. You liked it, Richard? Thank you. Long time viewer, first time poster. Mo Matthew, what's up? I'm gonna personally greet you and welcome you. Not everybody likes to come into the chat and they like to maybe watch it on their television and sit back and kind of take it in. And, and I appreciate that. Um, even some long time chatters, they, uh, they're like, ah, you know what? I'm gonna kind of just sit back and take it in and just read the chat and go along with it. Whatever floats your boat, guys, no pun intended as we, uh oh, hold on. I got a dog barking at me here on the. You're a good little watchdog. Yes, you are. We've got Gilligan's Island over here at this little beach. Hold on, I'll give you a shot. So you can see what it looks like there. It's a pretty tropical look right there, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. What's up, Terry Alessio? Fly out of PBI. Palm Beach International is PBI, and it's a great airport. It's my favorite airport down here because I find that it doesn't have the difficulties that you will have to deal with in, certainly in Miami, but even now in Fort Lauderdale because Fort Lauderdale has just gotten so ridiculously huge. And um, I mean, it's okay, you know, I've gone there and plenty of times and it's okay, but it's just like, where did I park? You know what I mean? They are really getting, uh, I, they, have, they have built it up and added more parking garages and as was necessary because of all the traffic that's coming through down here. But, um, but I prefer Palm Beach International because it has more of a um, s small town feel to it still. It maintains, it's kind of like Fort Lauderdale used to be like that. Not anymore. As you're looking at a lovely yacht right there. I'm on the bridge now in the town of Lantana. This is Palm Beach County, guys. I'm a Palm Beach County resident. So this is really more of my neck of the woods. So in case you're wondering, Lantana is about 37 miles to the north of Fort Lauderdale. Population of about 12,000. Named after the wild plant called the Lantana. Originally, this town was an oyster fishing town. Back in 1900s, early 1900s, it was an oyster fishing town. It was incorporated in 1921. There's just a little alcove here that I can come into and get a better shot of the intracoastal water when you can see how wide it opens up here. And all of these docks that people have access to boats that live in these homes that are right on the intracoastal. So the Intracoastal Waterway is a man-made, it was built by the Corps of Engineers, and it was um, dug out from really, you know, uh, almost up to Maine, all the way up the coast. I guess Massachusetts is where it ends, and it comes all the way down, and it actually goes around the other coast. The Gulf Coast has an Intracoastal as well, which is pretty incredible. Wichita, Kansas is the air capital of the world, really, Don. One of the smallest airports, did not know that. Looks like a house vanilla ice remodel. Well, you know what, Danny, what's up? Welcome, uh, could be. He lives in Palm Beach County somewhere. I think he's in, um, where is he? Is he in the Okeechobee? He's somewhere kind of a little more remote. Too bad Tri-Rail and Brightland do not connect to the airport. 
Yeah, Brightline, for those of you that don't know, Brightline is a privately owned, quote unquote, high speed rail. And I say quote unquote because it's not, it's not like a bullet train that goes 200 miles an hour in the counties like Palm Beach and Broward County and Dade County where it's not allowed to do that because of various zoning laws. But they are extending it. And that's of course where we just were. You could see the you could see the ocean from here. There's the O Hotel you see on the right. And you can see the ocean just peeking through on this close-up shot. But they are extending the reach of this Brightline rail really to a lot of places. But the main one that they're working on right now is to get it to go from South Florida, a very popular route, from South Florida to Orlando. For all the people in South Florida that want to go to Disney World and all the other things that are in Orlando and the Orlando area, they are extending that and they're working on it feverishly and it should be done. I actually spoke to Brightline this morning, one of their representatives, because I'd like to do something with them if possible, but uh, they, they won't officially say when it's going to be done. You see the bridge tender here. This is their station. Bridge tender tends to the bridge and opens the bridge when necessary for the boats that pass by. And uh, so that will likely, oh, thank you, Don. $10 from Don, I really appreciate it. Filipina and American. Uh, you guys are the best. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It means a lot to me. You guys are so helpful in bringing this channel to new heights and taking us to new places. So much appreciated a constant contributor to the channel and I really really appreciate that. You can uh, whoops, you can see here now as we come down the bridge there's a little public park here and there's parking in there as well. There's also parking along the side of the street here. Some of it's free. Um, but you just have to look and see if it's metered. Also, what they'll do is, even in the free parking, a lot of times they will often tell you you can only park there for two hours. And don't take that lightly because they have meter, city meter parking folks that their job is to go by and see if your car's still there two hours later. But again, this is the Intracoastal Waterway that will provide a means of transportation on the inside of the coast. That's what intra-coastal means, between coasts, intra-between. Have you ever met Traveling Robert? You know what, I'll tell you, Kelly, great question. I have not met him. I've been on his live chat a couple of times and um, he's acknowledged me, but I would love to meet Traveling Robert. I'm a big fan of his. Big fan of his. My brother, Carrie, introduced me to Traveling Robert, and um, it, was, it was his idea for us to take a RV trip around the, the state, and unfortunately, we never got the chance to do that, so I went and took it upon myself to do that, and Traveling Robert was an inspiration as well, and also very insightful and helpful because the guy's done it all. He's been everywhere down here. So I'm going to just actually go here real quick and show you. We got that extra hour of light now too, don't we guys? This little public park here, right on the west side of the bridge. Lantana guys, a great little town. I'll tell you what, if you want to kind of get away from the hustle and bustle of busier places like Fort Lauderdale and Miami, come up to Lantana. Come and check this place out. It's beautiful. Oh, are we live at the same time? That's funny. Well, you know what? I, uh, he's live more often than I am. He is, uh, he, is the, he is the energizer bunny that keeps going. He is just an amazing and an inspiration. And, uh, you know, I, I want to try to 
go live as often as I can. Oh, look at this little squirrel. Hello. You're a lucky squirrel that lives in Florida, aren't you? She have a nice bench here. And look at this, a great spot right here. I can sit down here for a second. And oh, it's wet. That I really appreciate. Um, Stella says, nice park. Boca has those two right off the bridge. That's right. And Boca in Palm on Palmetto Park Road recently opened up the new Wildflower Park. So I did the Christmas par boat parade from there. Richard says it has a small town feel. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of older Florida. Beach Bomb, Terry has lots of enthusiasm about his travels. Thank you. You know what? If I can't be excited about this, guys, something is definitely the matter. Uh, this is not something I do because, uh, because of any kind of a uh, monetary um, reward. I do this because I love it, and I know you guys love it, and I want to bring it to you. So... Um, so thank you. Mo Matthew, love action kid too. So laid back. Fun to see the two of you do live streams together. Yes, uh, they have been fun journeys and uh, I hope to do more in the future. Hi, Eve. What's going on, Eve? Eve Langlua. I hope I pronounced that correct. I think I did. Eve Langlua. It's not Langlois, it's Langlua, right? Uh, this will probably take you under the bridge. I was happy to see my New York Rangers defeat the Washington Capitals last night it was got a little scary there at the end but we were able to do it i think we're playing montreal or is it pittsburgh that's playing montreal maybe we just played montreal and i think we beat you guys no iguanas jtsr yeah you know what i'll tell you what they uh i'm not seeing any right now but they are certainly in abundance down here that is for sure you could see look guys it's it's like i can't even get a full rainy day you know, the sun is out. The sun is out. Joe, go Rangers. There you go. Go Habs, Luis says. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like I said, teach their own. We have our teams, right? We root for our teams. It's good to do that. Palm trees abound here. They have picnic tables so you could come out here and you know, pack a lunch or dinner and enjoy a nice day. So I'm going to continue the walk. I'm going to show you a very famous bar in Florida. You guys have seen me there before, but many of you are new to the channel, so maybe not. Go crack it. Kraken is the Seattle Kraken. They are, they, they are good this year. So congratulations to them. A very new team that's only, what, two years old at most? And having a very good season this year. So I'm happy about that. Clouds look beautiful even in the rain, JG says. It's sunnier vibe than New York City. Yeah, well, here you go, guys. I don't want to put it in your eyes, but... The sun has peaked out here at the end of the afternoon, almost like a nice, good omen. I'm going to actually, you know what, guys, I'll cross the street. There's Kona Bay right there. I'm going to cross the street because what I want to show you is on that side anyway. And the marina is here. There's a little marina here in Lantana. Gina in the house. What's going on, Gina? Ladies and gentlemen, Gina, my lifesaver. Good to see you. Um, actually, you know what? There's a pedestrian crossing right here that I could have taken. And now they will stop. Or not. Thank you and thank you. Lady in the Lexus, you should have stopped. <laughs> so here you go. We got a bait and tackle shop. We got Kona Bay, a little restaurant cafe right there. And this is a marina here. 
and they have chartered fishing boats here which you can get on this one is called bar jack fishing lady k sportsman's park marina and we got some pelicans so uh, get ready to hear it guys i know you're waiting to hear me say it it's like remember remember good times who's old enough to remember good times the show with jj and everybody couldn't wait for him to say dino might what's up buddy how you doing i'm good thanks for asking are we catching anything today guys boatfish are, are those good or do they taste good all right well nothing wrong with that something's better than nothing right are you got you guys are the professionals here you've been doing this for quite some time right what's uh not really not i but maybe he has Oh, okay. He's got all the paraphernalia here. You got a, what kind of uh, what kind of bait are we using today, sir? Shrimp. Shrimp. They like the shrimp. Everybody likes shrimp. Doesn't need cake. Oh, well, look at those things. Oh, so those are are those puffer fish? Wow. So you can eat those. Yeah. But don't correct me if I'm wrong, sir. But from what I remember, pufferfish have a poisonous gland in them, do they not? Yeah. So how are you doing it so that you're cooking it without worrying about getting poison? You know how to clean them. You know how to clean them. What what is it that you have to take out? Is it a certain organ? Yeah, the liver. Okay. Well, here we go. They ain't puffing no more, ladies and gentlemen. But you enjoy them. Thank maybe you so much. Maybe we'll um, send you a sandwich one day. Send me a sandwich. I'll take a sandwich. How are we preparing these? What are, what are we doing to cook them up to make them taste good? A little seasoning? I don't know. Deep brown. Deep brown. Deep brown. All right. Put them in the oven. Deep brown. Well, listen, you guys enjoy. And thanks so much for sharing with us. I really appreciate it. Is that a porgy right there? Looks like a porgy. Porgy and Bess? No? Come on, pelicans! You know what's funny? Who said that? Stella, I, th I thought it was snakes too. I was like, what's he got in there? Burmese python? Oh, man. If you're just joining me, it's me, the Barefoot Vlogger, and here I am. I might actually switch back to the sunglasses. I am in Lantana, I'm in the marina, and we are walking and talking. What's up, guys? How you doing? Well, you know what? I got it. Do you mind if I ask you guys a question? This looks like a really particularly interesting spot that you have chosen right here with a, a boat on ramp, off ramp is. Why this spot? Uh, I don't know. What do you like? <laughs> no? All right. Well, listen, have you caught anything yet? No, uh, not yet. Nothing yet. All right. Go, go, go catch a winner, guys. All right. Look at this old boat. Hold on. TH, what's going on? Good to see you. Guys, this is a classic right here. Look at this. Newport, Rhode Island in the house. This is a classic. By the way, the white spots right here that you're seeing, pelican poop. It looks like somebody's actually uh, gonna take a shot at cleaning it. This is a really nice classic vessel. Right out of Jaws. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Fabuloso. What's up, Pastel? OTJ, what's going on? Yeah, you know what? Uh, they obviously don't want to be on camera, which surprised me because they started chatting a little bit at first, but um, I got the picture, so. I said it. Yeah, Donna. What's up, Flyfin? Good to see you. Thank you guys all for joining me. It, it, it turned out to be a nice day. It turned out to be a nice day. It was raining. We fucking, look, I have an umbrella. I don't, listen, guys, how often have you seen me carry an umbrella, even when it's raining? And I was like, no, because I was thinking about you guys and the camera. Look at the sun as it's getting ready to set here. 
over the intracoastal waterway here in Lantana. It's a beautiful spot. It's something a little different. As you see the pelicans flying low in over a beautiful Florida winter backdrop of this water. Oh, she's getting, she's getting close to that pelican. So what do they have there? They have like a, uh, I don't know, let's go in for a closer look. They don't eat puffer fish, they dry them out and sell them to tourists? Really? Uh, well, I gotta trust that what he was saying was, was, was true there, Brian, but he did have quite a few of them. I don't know. I do know that they could be poisonous if you eat the wrong part of it. That much I remember. Thank you, Hessa. Go enjoy your tea. Anytime. Stay tuned. I will be back in other places that I think might be of interest to you guys. Here's another shot of that boat from this side. And you can see how lovely it is. And uh, we got a pelican here, guys. That is, uh, I don't want to scare him away. Is that your friend? <laughs> is he? Yeah. Oh, how cute. They'll let you get close so we can get a picture? A little bit, yeah. A little bit? Cool. Awesome. That's not your boat right there, is it? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, uh, some of them can be really friendly and let you get very close, especially if they think you're carrying any food with you. Yeah, I wish I had some food for them. I know, me too. They're probably starving some of these poor things, but um, I do know that a lot of people, they leave their bait or they'll cut up their, um, they'll fillet their fish and leave the little parts around. And mm -hmm. so they'll get those, they'll scavenge for those, but they're actually really good fishermen, these things. Yeah. Did you ever see them go up in the air and dive down and uh, catch? Oh, you're scared of my umbrella? I'm sorry. I don't want to scare you, buddy. Aw, little cute face. Yeah, so cute. Yeah, I've never seen it. Except for, like, I think on, like, Nemo, Finding Nemo. What, a pelican? Yeah. Really? Oh, you're not from here? No, I am, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, if you go down... Oh, there he goes. I'm sorry. Yeah. I scared him. You're going to have to go over there now. <laughs> sorry about that. But, uh, oh, look, it's his friend. Oh, look, they just ate something. Oh. Could be a little happy family. Yeah, look at their neck. Yeah, isn't that cool? So the fish, they will actually swallow a fish. Yeah. And you can't tell when their heads are down like that. But when their heads are up, you can see how wide their necks are. And it will actually enable them to swallow a fish whole. Are you cold? <laughs> it's a little chilly yeah. for Florida, isn't it? Did you happen to notice what the temperature was? It was I, it was 64 last I saw, but I think it's even colder than that now. Yeah. I'm wearing long sleeves and I'm chilly too. Well, it's nice chatting with you, dear. Oh, you too. Thank you so much. Take care now. Oh, she's on the boat taking pictures. That's cool. All right, guys. We uh, I want to make some tracks here because there's at least one more stop I want to make and show you guys. We have 251 people watching. Thank you for joining me. It's me, the Barefoot Vlogger. We had some rain today, guys. Look, I got puddles to show you. We have puddles, which is crazy. Here's a sign for the boaters, slow speed, minimum wake. Wake, of course, is the white stuff that comes out of the back of the boat when they're going fast with the engines. So minimum wake means they don't want to see a lot of that because what happens with the wake is, um, in parts where the intracoastal gets slimmer especially and there are houses and there's other smaller boats and stuff around that wake will turn into waves that can uh, be disruptive and sometimes cause problems so they say no wake as you can see we got that extra hour of light it's still plenty light here and uh, we do have clouds 
but the rain seems to have taken off. I did check the weather report before I came out here. It was very accurate. I must give it credit. It said that uh, the rain was going to come in between well, around 4 o'clock and be its heaviest around that time between 4 and 4.30. And then clear up and by 6 p.m. it would be like what you're looking at right now. Still find affordable uh, places on the intracoastal and condos, Richard said. That's interesting. I'll tell you what's good about that is, um, let's say you're a big fan of Fort Lauderdale or Del Rey or Deerfield or Boca. You're not in those towns, but you're not that far from them. Didn't take me that long to get here. So if you can find an affordable place here and make it your home, and yet you want to go and check out those other places, you kind of get the best of both worlds. Wow, smells really good in there. Hey guys, how's the food? It's, uh, give it a, uh, give it a 7.9. 7.9, that's not bad. Now that bar stool guy, a 7.9 for him is like a 10 for me. You're the original bar stool guy? You're a New York pizza aficionado? Yeah. Oh, we got to hear more about that. Where are you guys from? Well, I'm from Brooklyn originally. Okay. I'm, I'm from... I, I, I know. It's the fourth largest city in the world, I think, isn't it? Something like that. I make pizza. And I make it in my house. I don't even need those fancy ovens. All right. We're going, we're going to his house. He makes good pizza at his house. All right. My brother, who's never given me a compliment in my life, says that he says I should open up a pizza place because I make good pizza. I know all the tricks for what is what is the key to good pizza? Uh, it's a co- it has to be a combination. It has to be the sauce cheese ratio has to be correct. Oh, we got ratios. I'm out. I suck at math. Okay, the dough has to be good. The sauce. You can't have a great pizza without all the things being right. And aesthetically pleasing. No, aesthetic, the eye. Aesthetic has it has nothing, to look great. Aesthetic has nothing to do with it. Uh, you know what though? I kind of agree with her. I'll tell you why. Because now all the rage is this New Haven pizza. And that, to me, New Haven pizza, I never tried it. It I could be great. It. it looks like it got hit by a truck and it's I burned. I'll tell you the truth. It's I don't good. care if it's when burned. Like burned. When you make good pizza, it automatically looks good. It's, I've never tasted pizza that looked like crap. You it's can't good. have one without the other. If it's good, it's got to look good. It's just, I mean, I've had, I've had pizza that looks good, maybe, and it tasted like crap. But I've never had pizza that looked bad and tasted good. <laughs> All right. So, But now tonight you're eating sushi, though, so... Yeah, I'm on YouTube right now. I'm the Barefoot Vlogger. I'm from Brooklyn, by the way. I'm from, Bright- I'm from Brighton Beach. Canarsie. Canarsie. South Shore High School, baby. South Shore High School. I know it. I went to Lincoln. I went to South Shore Hook High School. Horns, baby. There we what go. What year did you graduate? Uh, 81. I'm an old timer. Oh, yeah. I'm 78. Okay. Whoa, really? He's well preserved. That must be all that good pizza. <laughs> All right, guys, cheers to you, and thank you for sharing that with us. And I'm the Barefoot Vlogger on YouTube, so. My name is Terry. I'm the Barefoot Vlogger. Just remember, no shoes. Yeah. Take a picture. Hold on. Yeah, because I gave them my last card. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Are you going to Ravish next? No, I'm walking. I'm going to go to Key Lime House. Are you new in Florida? No, I've I moved here in 80, 80, Christmas 83. I moved to Florida. You have to go to Ravish. I've been there Ravish. Barefoot vlogger with a V. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe. You have 245 people watching you right now. So you better know your stuff about pizza because everybody's going to show up at your house and see and test it for themselves. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. You drive, he would drive, he said, you probably can't hear him. He said he would drive 150 miles for pizza. Really? Ah, oh, you just lost a lot of credibility with me, pal. Come on. You have to drive to New Haven for pizza, 150 miles? Brooklyn. Brooklyn's the hometown of pizza. All right. I got to go. Go ahead. Tell me. Name one pizza place. Well, it's not as good as they said Frank Pepe's. They said that was great. 
and Sally's supposed to be the best pizza place in the freaking Frank Peppy's and Sally's. Okay, you're good. Magna Pizza? Magna? A Madden, a pizza. Oh, okay. Like a pizza, a pizza. Abits. Abits. It was good pizza, but it was definitely not the best pizza. All right. We will leave it at that. The best pizza I ever tasted is Persistence. Yeah. The guy died. It's DeFarra Pizza. Yeah, I know. I know DeFarra. I like Ray's Pizza, the original. The original. Yeah, that's what I heard. Okay, Brussels sprouts at Ravish. Just don't put them on the pizza. All right, guys. Nice meeting you. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Nice, folks. Nice, folks. Brooklynites. And uh, we got a lot of good information there from them. So, so guys, let me... Uh, multitasking here, and I'm carrying a lot of things. Let me put this back. Dollar pizza? Ah, uh, I don't know. I went by a few of those in New York, and they didn't look too good to me. So, guys, this is it. Actually, you know what? I'll go to the front and show you. But this is the Old Key Limehouse here in Lantana, Florida. This place is an institution. And, and by the way, it's the, it's, it may be the oldest waterfront bar in the state of Florida. I think that's their claim to fame. Because it was built in 1889. 1889, this bar, guys. This is something like you would think you were in Key West right now. Look at this. I'll catch up with the chat. Wait, hold on. I missed something. I missed something. Michael Bell. She is the bro. Michael Bell. Thank you so much. Thank God I didn't miss that because I certainly wouldn't want to. Patreon, unbelievable contributor, friend, and just such a moral supporter that is priceless to me so thank you so much my friend i really cheers first green beer here you go you can take a picture with the great white shark here oh they got music here so i gotta be careful with that They have, um, I'm hearing James Taylor right now, so I have to be careful with that, guys, because it cost me last time in uh, Kyocho. They demonetized that one vlog, but I'll, uh, I'll do the best I can. But Do not sit or stand on this car. This is a Little Deuce Coupe. Remember the uh, Beach Boy song? Little Deuce Coupe? Look at that thing. Wow. Now, that is something you really don't see on the roads anymore. Really? Whoa! <laughs> Take off without her. Toby! Oh, Toby enjoys the videos. $9.99 from Toby. Toby. Toby McGuire, Spider-Man. Oh, man. Thank you so much, Toby. I really appreciate it. And uh, you have contributed before. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much right here live in front of the old key lime house let's go toby i'm going to take you in there thank you my friend so kind of you and so generous the uh the old key lime house 1889 largest tiki bar in south florida locally caught up here guys on a Wednesday Wednesday night trying to get in to get seated here at the uh, old famous place in these parts many people have heard of it many people know about it Showing you uh, what's on the walls here on the inside of the restaurant. They have uh, quite a few different places you can sit. Bar here, which is good for if you just got here and you um, you're waiting for a table. Nice views. I'm going to walk outside now. You can see the uh, surfboard here with all the stickers on it. How cool is that? Very cool. Hi, Nikki One. Hi, Patrick. Good to see you guys. 
What's up, BB? Well, it ain't slippery no more. So this is one dining area that they have here, but the main tiki bar is over there, and I'll walk over there and show you guys. And they have this veranda here. They have a nice little spot up there that you can sit underneath. Well, that's a great table setting right there with a beautiful view of the water. Hi, Ski Deeds, what's going on? Good to see you. If I missed anybody, I'm so sorry. Becky, what's going on? Photo op with the shark, there you go. BB says pufferfish are deadly to humans. Yeah, there you go. 50 bucks a piece. I actually had a pufferfish in a fish tank once before and um, it did not do too well. It, it, you know, fish, it got something called the ick, which is like a, um, some sort of a, a fish disease. And I just couldn't get it under control and it affected my entire fish tank and it was a problem. So I returned it to the ocean from which it came. I had a saltwater fish tank. This is a long time ago. It was when I lived in Fort Lauderdale uh, across from Shooters. And I had a nice, big, it was like a 75 gallon fish tank. It was a good sized fish tank. And um, you can see these folks making their way. They have dockage here, so you can just pull right up, dock your boat, and then go and have lunch, dinner, drinks, whatever you want. But yeah, this is a very famous spot, and it's a really cool place. And here it is, right here in Lantana. And it's called the Old Key Lime House, and they are known for their key lime pies. Around the holidays, it's very difficult. You have to like call in and put your order in, but they have, this is considered the largest tiki bar in South Florida. From what I read, I don't know if that still holds true, but that's their claim to fame. Um, it, is, it is the oldest waterfront restaurant in Florida at um, 1889, so, you know, long time. They have dining, dancing, and live bands here, so uh, some place that you should uh, definitely check out if you happen to be in the area. It does get windier by the water. It was chilly today. Guys, remember, we had record-breaking heat here just days ago. It was in the 90s. 90s. Now, you know, the high today, I think, was 71. So it's just, it's just crazy. The weather's, like, all over the map. Let's follow this guy. I'll tell you what, the whiff of that food is great. I'll go this way. This is the main bar, guys. You've seen me sit here and eat here before and, uh, and enjoy it. Look how lively this is. Wednesday, early evening. And uh, there almost isn't a seat in the house. Well, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little adventure that we had here today in Lantana. Oh, they're playing a game here. Hold on, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was in your way. What is this? It's a ring toss. I'm right in the middle of it. Hold on. I was doing my... You know what, guys? I'm not going to end this stream. I'm going to keep walking. I'm just going to end it, but... I got another idea. I got to get out of here though because it's just too much music.
Here's where the band would be. If you want to stick along for the ride, I'm going to take a walk, guys. Kitchen. Hammerhead. Kalaja, the wooden Indian. All right, I gotta roll. There's too much music here. I'll show you guys where I'm gonna go though. I'm gonna take a walk. Bonus footage. Why not? How often do I get up to this spot? Once in a while, but not every day. So I want to guys while it's still light how kind of key key westy it looks here it's it's like old florida it's like i said let's take a walk up one of these blocks how about that let's do that that's us one federal highway just up ahead how about a Florida block right here, guys? This is a Florida block for you. Look at this house. Let me not get hit by a car. Right now, guys, as I'm walking, I'm getting the smell of drawn butter. I don't know if it's coming out of any of these houses or the bar I just left from, but I really enjoyed it. And uh, I'm gonna continue this mission because I have more to show you guys. Jack's Old Fashioned. You like that one, Johnny? Yeah, isn't that a cool place? So I was doing the Fort Lauderdale stuff. And you can see they have like these little alleys here. Aren't, aren't those cool? They have that also in, um, in Hollywood, a lot of those. But yeah, I was coming home and I was so hungry and tired and just ready to just plop down somewhere. And I remembered that Jax was right there on the way back. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna stop for a burger. South Florida has a lot of places like that. We also have a Skyline Chili here for all my Ohio folks. We do have one. Nice house. Hey, this goes out to one, right? To Federal Highway? If I want to get to Federal Highway, right? I'll make a right or I'll keep going to the left? I think just keep going that way. Right there? Oh, okay. It's where that dog is there. Okay, thank you. It's Yeah, it can get a little confusing here. I don't want to make a wrong turn. That will take me to one, and then I want to show you guys something when I get there. Hopefully, you could still see. It's starting to get a little darker, mostly because of the clouds. You could still see the sun there. Terry, you are so blessed, Brian says, to live in Florida, such a nice place. Yeah, you know, um, I agree with you and I appreciate that. Thank you for the sentiment. And I, you know, again, it's not like I have anything against North Carolina because I, I thought it was a nice place, but it's inland. It wasn't even the weather, guys, as much as it was the fact that it was off of, I had no beach, I had no ocean. I couldn't see it. I couldn't, like, you know, after a hard day work, whatever it was, you, you know, you'd stressed out or whatever. You want to just get in your vehicle and drive to the beach. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. It's a four-hour drive. So it was, uh, it was something that I missed because I was away from it for so long. It's not, listen, a year, two years, three years, that could be considered a long time. I was gone for 14 years, guys. And... So I really grew 
a, a bigger appreciation than I ever had for what I missed and what I used to have. And now that I have it back, I don't take it for granted. I really don't. So I think right here, guys, is something I want to show you guys. Could be wrong, but nope, nope, I'm not. It is. It is. We are on the quest of the Barefoot Mailman's home stomping grounds. And this hotel right here, this hotel, ladies and gentlemen, or motel, I guess, is also a tribute to the Barefoot Mailman. Barefoot Mailman delivered mail here in the late 1800s. And this hotel is actually named the Barefoot Mailman Hotel. Hold on. Thumbnail, my namesake. I love the Barefoot Mailman. I just love that whole story, which is true. So you can rent a room here at the Barefoot Mailman Hotel, aptly named because he walked through these parts. Hey, it's pretty cool. and stuff nice veranda there apples and oranges pastries all right guys I gotta make tracks because there's one last thing I want to show you and I honestly don't know how the signal is gonna be and it's a little bit of a hike but I'm gonna try it barefootmailmanmotel.com so right now guys where I'm walking ain't going to be much of a view. I'm just going to tell you that right now. This is Dixie Highway, Pine Street. And um, I got a little bit of a walk if you guys want to venture with me. Terry's new home. Need to stay a night. Yeah. You know what? I'm not sure, but I, I can't remember if one and Dixie Highway over here are the same thing. I think they might bleed into each other. But that's the train tracks right there. You can see the difference though, guys. You can see kind of how old world it is here for Florida. Not that far removed from South Florida, you know, where I live. Look at this, this is their Chamber of Commerce. My goodness, almost looks like one of the refuge houses that the barefoot mailman would lived in. Thank you guys all for joining me. I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, little sojourn that we went on. Little trip here in Lantana, Florida. You know what, guys? I don't want to bore you with this walk that way. There was method to my madness. It's a little too far. It's probably going to be dark. So what I'm going to do is one though, and uh, I'm going to start walking back. And I will uh, try to stay up with the chat. So where I wanted to take you guys right now, it's just too far. It's probably not, it's probably about another mile and a half. By the time I get there, it's going to be dark. So I'm just realizing now how far it is. There is a park, and it's called the Hypoluxo Scrub. And there is a statue there dedicated to the Barefoot Mailman that is 14 feet tall. But I want to give it its due. So stay tuned for that, because uh, I will be back in these parts 
pretty soon. Oh, what's up, Benny? Yeah, I think, I, you know what? I think, it, I think it'll be worth your time, my friend. I think it will be. I, 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 we had a nice, fun journey today, and thanks for joining. We are here in Lantana, and uh, I started off at the O Resort and Spa in Manalapan, which is literally steps away from where the public beach in Lantana is. And we had a nice day. We had some rain. I have an umbrella that I probably should have left. You want to hear a version of singing in the, in the rain, Becky? Well, you know what? I'm trying to build this channel, <laughs> not, not destroy it. Oh, that's so funny. Hey, listen, I, if you want to see me singing and dancing, if you haven't already seen it, watch the Calle Ocho live stream and vlog. You will see Barefoot doing a little rendition of uh, Ricky Ricardo. Tried my best anyway. So what I'm going to do instead of taking this back where we already took is I'm just going to walk down to um, Ocean Avenue. I'll make a right turn and uh, I'll walk on the other side of the street this time to give you guys different point of view but uh wow we're going over two hours nice long live stream it's good to be with you guys thank you for joining me this is uh lantana it is in palm beach county and it is not far from downtown west palm beach really as the crow flies about twelve thousand people live here calling lantana home it is not the first place that might pop into your mind when you think about moving to Florida. If you are interested in moving someplace in Palm Beach County or close to, but maybe it should be. You probably get some deals here, as Richard pointed out earlier. 40% of Florida homes have no mortgages. Yeah, that's not that surprising to me because almost 40% of the people that have just made purchases down here paid cash so I don't know where all these people are getting all this money from back in the day guys everybody had a mortgage everybody if you owned a home you had a mortgage and the homes were a lot less money but money had more value money certainly had more value than it does now you know when I'm, I'm paying $12 for a can of beer at a festival, I mean, you go back not that long ago, and if you would have told me that, I would have been like, wow, what kind of a nightmare was that that I just woke up from? Now it's reality. It's just the way it is, you know? Carton of eggs for eight bucks? Come on. What happened? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross the street. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go, go, go. And, uh... Waters World? Nah, I don't care about that. I'm not a political, uh, I'm not a fan of the political news segments on either side. It's, it, there is no fair and balanced news anymore. It doesn't exist. I'm not a fan of CNBC. I'm not a fan of CNN. I'm not a fan of Fox. I don't like any of them. And I think they're all as guilty of the same spreading of their own opinions in what is supposed to be a new show. You know, I went to journalism school and the first thing they teach you is unbiased. Unbiased. And with the, in, the advent of cable news networks, unbiased is out the window. It's supposed to show both sides of any argument and let the viewers be the judge. 
But that doesn't happen anymore. There's a lot of brainwashing going on in the news. All of these channels. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. I don't care if you're, you know, anywhere in the entire spectrum. Wow, look at this place. This is the Oceano Kitchen. I wonder if I could uh, show you guys this restaurant and all these folks that are here sitting down here at this Oceano Kitchen and having a lovely meal. They, they're known for lobsters here, this place. I know that. Um, locally inspired seafood. So. YouTube's the best place to get information. I agree with that because you're seeing people like me, the man in the sand, the, the, the man. You know what? I'm actually going to... i got to be careful, guys, when I cross the street because I'm crossing in the middle here and I don't want to break any rules or put myself in peril, but cheese shop, artisan market. I just want to... Oh, here's Ravish. She was telling us about this Ravish. Um, had one of my videos on their Fox News show? Come on. If that's true, I want to see that. That I'll watch. Hey, can I show my viewers? I'm the Barefoot Vlogger. Can I, I want to show them your beautiful place. We've heard a lot about it. This is beautiful. Wow. What are you guys known for? Can, do you mind telling me? That's okay. I didn't want to put you on the spot. I appreciate you inviting us in here, but we heard so many good things about it. It's gorgeous in here. It's beautiful. I'll just I'll just show them around if you don't mind. That'd be great. Awesome. Okay. Music here. This beautiful bar they got here, gorgeous bar, and um, great clientele. Everybody's enjoying themselves and having fun. There's ample seating in here. It just looks like a wonderful place. So, this is what you, hey guys, this is what she was talking about, Ravish. So, thank you, young lady, for sharing that with us. Thank you, dear. Beautiful place. We'll have to come and check it out. Thank you. You too. Okay. Hold on. Am I reading you guys right? Hold on. I got to I got to see what you guys are saying. Your mic is furry. Yeah, that's on purpose, John, to keep it from uh Um, are you guys serious? They took a clip of mine and put it on Fox News? What was it, one of the uh, spring break clips? I'm curious now. I hope they gave me attribution, because if they did, that'll definitely help the channel out. It's like I said, I, I view them all the same. I don't, uh, I, I don't have any you know, um, leanings towards, you know, liking one versus the other. I just, I don't like the um, brainwashing of America. I, I really don't. I think, I think just present the news, present the facts. Um, if you're going to have opinions presented as such, but have a more equally balanced opinion to juxtapose to that. I mean, sometimes they do. They'll have the other person that's on there, but it's, it's kind of too one-sided. That's my point. But you know what? That's kind of the evolution of the news. That's the evolution, and I guess I just need to get used to that. Um, I'm just old school when it comes to journalism in terms of the media supposedly being the watchdog. And as, you know, as I was taught, it's, it, you need to present all sides of the, of the angle that you are bringing to your viewers. I don't think that the news does a good job of that anymore. It's too, I can't watch it. Honestly, I can't watch it. I feel like it's being forced down my throat that it's, um, it was on for about 20 seconds. Well, that's a pretty long time. 20 seconds is a long time, guys. 20 seconds, I mean, average commercial is 15 to 30. So 20 seconds is a long time. 
I'll take it. So this is where we were. You see old Key Limehouse. Thanks for letting me know that. Was that something you were watching live and you saw it? What's up, Mike? Yeah, listen, uh, national, national exposure is great, guys. That certainly can't hurt if they could figure out that it was our channel and the Barefoot Army. Scott, do me a favor. Oh, it's Snot. <laughs> Sorry, it's Snot. Wasn't that the name of the dog on uh, Christmas Vacation? Snot. Snot bubbles. Hey, snot bubbles, send me that. Send it to me. Comment, put it in your comments or something. Send it to me. Anyway, I'm going to walk up here. Barefoot Mailman Motel. Yes, Brad, we were just there. We were just there. Please watch it back when you get a chance. I know you probably just joined us, but I was just in front of the Barefoot Mailman Hotel. There is a Barefoot Mailman celebration coming up, so stay tuned for that. This is the Lady K. It's pretty famous, this Lady K. I talked to some of the Fisher folk on this in one of my videos. All right, Joe. You take care, brother. Great job as always, and thank you so much, my friend. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. I'm going to walk back over the bridge and show you the view from up on high. You're the man. Thanks, Joe. Great job. Thank you, as always, for all your help. Really appreciate it. Shrek says, I look like Ray Romano. You know what? That used to piss me off. Now I'll take it. Thank you for the compliment. I happen to love Ray. <laughs> it's funny how uh, we, we change our opinions and attitudes as we age sometimes. But I happen to love Ray. He's great. I'm a big fan. That was one of my favorite sitcoms of all time. I loved the trip to Italy when the whole family got on the plane and went to Italy. It's one of my favorite. They, I, there was a couple of episodes with that. It was like a two-part series they had when they took a trip to Italy. It was great. Good old palm trees. Oh, Palm Beach, Skip says. Yes, good old Palm Beach. That's where we are. Palm Beach County. In the town of Lantana, 12,000 strong. And we are walking on the bridge here on Ocean Avenue. As the sun is setting over South Florida. Call Jesse. They'll have you on to share your thoughts of you. What was the topic? What was the topic? Anybody know? You look better than Ray Romano. Thanks, Gina. I appreciate that. The days of people confusing me for uh, Richard Gere are over, I guess. What's up, buddy? Beautiful South Florida, love it. Me too. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you go right ahead. Well, what's up? What do you guys got? A little team here going? Oh, yeah. What these? What does that exactly do for you? Uh, the wow. Strengthen the legs. Well, you got a nice view to do it. <laughs> Look at them all. Those things. Are you pushing out with your legs as you're doing that, oh, sir? Yeah, yeah. Really? The band pulls them together. Right. And you just gotta stretch it out. Right. Go. Uh, how how far do you go? Oh, I'm just going from there to there to back three times. That's a, that's just the warm up. That's all it takes. What exactly does it do for you in the long run? Tears up the muscles, lets them regrow stronger. There you go. All right. There you go. Nothing wrong with having strong legs. Have a good day. You too, sir. 
How about that sky, huh? Look at that sky, you guys. Wow. Good job, man. Keep it going. You thought I did a great Sonny Crockett? Well, I, you know, there's no better compliment. Gina, thank you. <laughs> Tifa needing a spring break. Oh my God. Uh, Mello wants to know if there's a bar restaurant in Lantana that has a pool in the middle of it. Well, um, that I don't know. I mean, we were just at the Key, Old Key Lime House, which is a great location that's right on the water. They don't have a pool. Certainly a beautiful spot, but we started this stream at the O Hotel Resort, which has multiple pools and is beautiful if it's in your budget. Not easy. Health is wealth. Very well said. We should put that on t-shirts. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care where you live, what kind of condo, house. I don't care if you live in a castle on the ocean. If you don't have your health, it does not matter. I would rather live under this bridge and be healthy than have all of that and be unhealthy. And I mean that. <laughs> they were like zombies. A little bit. What's up, Mikey P? Is this beautiful, though, guys? What a view. Am I near Bel Air? What's up, Greet? Uh, Bel Air. This isn't California. I don't know what you mean by Bel Air. I'm not sure where that is. I'm in Lantana which is in Palm Beach County, Florida. I know Palm Air, if that's what you're talking about. That's near Pompano. I'm not sure about Bel Air. Is there a Bel Air in Palm Beach? Could be, that I'm not remembering. Look at that sky. Jay Sully, Fox News. Yeah, I'm hearing that we were on Fox News, guys, and uh, that would be really cool. Going to gym regularly is, is important, yeah. I, I, you know what? I get a lot of folks ask me like what I do. They tell me I'm in good shape and that's great to hear and they, they wanna know like what I do. And guys, this is what I do. I mean, I've been holding this camera on this gimbal, just this, just this little holding of this camera here uh, while we've been doing this is giving me a workout, honestly. It's kind of like dynamic tension, you know, holding it up or holding a weight out. You do it for a while and it, uh, it really, it builds you up. It builds you up. So, so it's pretty cool. This cloud above me is, look at this thing. It almost looks like the UFO in Independence Day. Look at that cloud. My goodness. You think so, Ski? I'll, I'll try. I'll reach out to them. I mean, I don't know if you guys are pulling my leg. It doesn't sound like you were. Sounds like you were serious about that. I'm certainly going to uh, do what I can to find that if we were indeed, you said 20 minute mark. Um, so yeah, if you guys can find it, if you have a link or something you could send me to make it easier for me, let me know. I would love to uh, watch that back. And I'm also curious to know how you knew it was my stream. Did you see me? Was I in it? Very interesting. All right, Donna, you take care. I hope you're thawed out. I hope it stops snowing. And I hope everything is good. Skeeties is completely serious. I know you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't jive me, man. I know it, I know it. That was the pool party I was at, okay. Interesting. Beck E, so wow, a lot of you guys saw it and you picked up on it. So I, I can tell who, who watches the channel and knows what's going on. Well, guys. I, uh, that about does it for me from here. I had a lot of fun and I hope you guys did as well on our mission today to retrace some of the footsteps of the Barefoot Mailman, show you some of the stomping grounds here in Lantana, a wonderful town in Palm Beach County, right here on the Intracoastal. Um, 
I will be back as often as I can be. So please set your alerts if you haven't already. And, uh, and thank you so much for joining me. And thank you, Fox News, for having us on. So uh, I'm going to head back. And uh, I, I appreciate you guys being with me. And thank you so much for those of you that contributed. And um, thank you for all the well wishes and kind thoughts. Till next time, from the bridge in Lantana, this is the Barefoot Vlogger with a beautiful sunset to my back saying, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, a little rain ain't a bad thing. We finally got some. The rain gods heard me. Till next time, from the bridge in Lantana, overlooking the Intracoastal, this is the Barefoot Vlogger saying, stay well and stay tuned. Hey, you saw me on Fox News. Take care, guys. Signing off.